For this is the will of the Lord concerning you. If you don't mind, just reach around and greet your brothers and sisters in the name of the Lord. Y'all come on. Y'all come on. And I'm going to ask you to take some time and do that with your brothers and sisters in the Lord. If that means you got to go on the opposite side of the church, you can do that. Amen. If that means you got to go from one road to the next, but share the love of the Lord. We see some people who we haven't seen in a while in the house of the Lord today. Oh, hallelujah. Tell them I am so excited to see you in the house of the Lord. You are in the right place at the right time. As we celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a celebration service, and we are going to celebrate and honor the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take your time. Maybe someone next to you or in front of you just needs another hug or a word of encouragement. Let them know that they're in the right place at the right time. Hallelujah. And we got another new song this morning, but it's simple. And if you can't catch the words, you can clap maybe, or you can shout, but we're giving praise to the Lord Jesus, our God. Did you come to give him praise? We're going to sing this. We say, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. If you can't sing, you can clap right there and give Yahweh praise. Hallelujah. Glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Y'all ready? Let's sing. Yahweh. From the top, you ready? Sing with us, Yahweh. Yahweh.
you can join in with us and we're going to sing that again. You ready? Say no one. No one, no way. No one, no way. We can't find nobody like you, Jesus. No one, no way.
And that same Jesus will keep you from falling. That same Jesus will lift your head. That same Jesus will keep your mind. I'm talking about Jesus, the resurrected King. I'm talking about Jesus, the reason why we're here today. Because we don't just wait until one time of year, but we celebrate the resurrected power. The resurrected power. The resurrected power. Yeah. The resurrected power. Come on, yeah. The resurrected power. We're making all things new with his resurrected power. We're making all things new with his resurrected power. He causes dead things to live. The resurrected power. And those who die in Christ. The resurrected power. They will live again. The resurrected power. The dead in Christ will rise. The resurrected power. And we will see him. The resurrected power. And we will see him. The resurrected power. We have power. The resurrected power. We have power. The resurrected we can't power. Stay down long. We can't stay down. The resurrected we can't power. stay down long. We can't stay down the resurrected long. Power. Jesus on the inside working on the, the resurrected eye. power. The resurrected power. The resurrected power. Rise us up, God. The resurrected power. Who got up out of the grave? The resurrected power. Who got up out of the grave? The resurrected power. We have hope. We have hope. Jesus. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. You reach down in the grave. You reach down in the grave. Jesus. And the last enemy that you will overcome is death. I couldn't 
conviction. This time, when you make that declaration, can I invite you to do something about it? Can I invite you to do something about it? On the third time when you make that declaration, tell your neighbor, 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 this time we're going to do something about it. When we make that declaration that the Lord Jesus got up, his death, it was great, it was good. His burial was even better. But look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, neighbor.
through the precious blood of Jesus. We have eternal life through the redeeming power of Jesus. Glory, Jesus. Glory, Jesus.
Hallelujah. It's all right. It's all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful thing for the saints of the Lord to praise him. We're going to pray and then we're going to receive our bishop. If you don't mind, just grab hands or arms or yoke up with the person standing next to you. With your mouth open in praise and in worship to the Lord, we're going to pray. We're going to offer up prayers before him. Just begin to give God praise and give him glory right where you are. Father, we honor you, we bless you, we glorify you for who you are. Father, we thank you for your presence that makes a difference in our lives. We thank you that it is indeed the anointing that destroys every yoke. God, we thank you that as we stand here in this sacred place, on this day that we collectively com commemorate your resurrection, we give you praise, Father, for what you did for your sacrifice something that could not be done because of our good works, because of anything that we've done, because of anything that we deserve, but simply because you had a plan for us before the foundation of the world. And Father, we thank you that you did not count it robbery to wrap yourself in flesh, to come to this earth, Father, to save our wretched souls. Mm. Father, we thank you for your love and for your blood. We thank you for the forgiveness of sin and for the cleansing of all unrighteousness. And we give you praise, Father, that because of this hope that we have in you, Lord Jesus, as the resurrected King, that we have a hope and a witness that is alive in us, that we will boldly tell the world and show the world that Jesus saves. To the utmost, Jesus saves. Father, we thank you that there's saving power, there's healing power, there's redeeming power, there's restoring power in the name and in the blood of Jesus, the Lamb. We give you praise and we give you glory, Father, for anointing us as we go forward in this service, that we will experience your power, the depth of your glory and your will towards us. We say, have your way, and we give you praise in advance for it. And we celebrate you for what you've done, for what you are doing, and for what you're going to do in our lives. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you don't mind, just clap your hands and give God praise right where you are. Come on, will you celebrate one more time and give Jesus glory and honor. If you don't mind, just tell someone, I'm so excited about seeing you today in the space. And tell them, I'm excited about your future. Amen, amen. Be seated, please, in the presence of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. We're grateful to the Lord for his grace and for his mercy. And uh, we've come to the end of this Lenten season. What better way to celebrate than to remember the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And I'm hearing because we have some great presentations with our young folks and they're going to bless us real well. And um, so we want to move expeditiously. I just have a few, well, a few announcements. First, I want to say thank you to, uh, to Pop Parker. Uh, for servicing the grounds uh, this past winter, uh, for plowing, for shoveling, for salting. Amen. So thank you uh, to him. Want to, we had a great time last night, though, but those of us that came out, we had fun. <laughs> the, uh, our, our fellowship, New Beginnings Fellowship of Churches, fun night was last night, and it was absolutely great. Uh, Harvest Time Sanctuary, House of Refuge, Team B, Team Beatdown. As we, <laughs> and uh, and uh, 
some folks don't like to lose, and you just got to understand, y'all lost. That's all. You lost last night. Just take the L. It's okay. Uh, and FACWC, we were all here in the fellowship hall. As you can see, the fun never stops, um, and we thank the Lord for uh, such a great, uh, great, great evening. Thank you all for coming. Uh, on the next go-round, we'll get some more folks to uh, come on out and have some fun uh, with us in the name of the Lord. I want to say thank you to Faith Open Charity Worship Center, both here locally as well as uh, our extended family, um, those in various states um, who are constantly uh, extending themselves in acts of kindness. And I want to just take, um, take a pause and take note and say thank you to you all for your prayers and for your participation and your love. Uh, and you're giving to your church. Somebody say, to my church. Amen. So uh, thank you so much for all that you do, those things that are seen and that are unseen. Thank you for your acts of kindness. I want to say thank you to all those individuals, and you know who you are, who uh, clean and sanitize and prepare the church for worship. Uh, thank you for staying after worship service for a half hour, 45 minutes, hour, uh, however long it takes you. So thank you to all those uh, who work in that ministry and in that service to the church so we can have clean bathrooms and, and comfortable sanctuary to come in. If you don't mind, just clap for all those. Thank you, sir. I'd like to draw your attention again to our prayer list that is, of course, online. Uh, so you can go to the church's uh, webpage, uh, fhcwc.org, and on there you will see the prayer list of those that we are constantly in prayer for. We thank God for Brother White, amen, bring, being here this morning. Thank the Lord. Lastly, um, before we receive uh, our offerings in the form of gracious giving, uh, I wanted to announce today that um, uh, Elder Pop John Harris Sr. Uh, has slipped into eternal life. Um, he has gone to sleep in the Lord on last night. Um, so we bow in humble submission uh, to the will of the Lord. Uh, for a tremendous man of God who has gone on from labor to reward. And um, so if you don't mind, we'll, we'll do it <laughs> during the services and more information is to come and you'll get all of that for the services and all. Will you stand and clap your hands and thank God for a wonderful life well lived. You're so very kind. Thank you. Uh, please be seated. Um, so I ask that you be in prayer for the Harris family, um, the immediate and extended families. Uh, of course, we, the sons are here and on the drums and, and me <laughs> and uh, his daughter, uh, my wife, and um, for our presiding prelate and, and, uh, and elder Teresa Crocker, who over 50 years of, of friendship um, and uh, has gone to sleep in the Lord. Uh, but they who do live righteously. <laughs> this is, death is that transition and, uh, and it's the last enemy that shall be destroyed. Uh, so. Nobody to tell me pull it one time anymore. Pull it, Sonny Poo. Pull it one time. Um, so let's let's sow our seed. If you be so kind. Um, amen. Um, 
if, if you're giving here in the sanctuary, you can just raise your hand. If you're giving virtually or online through PayPal uh, for, for FHCWC, for the church here, uh, it is paypal.me forward slash FHCWC. Again, paypal.me forward slash FHCWC. I would ask as well, as you have been in, in times past, that you would also uh, be a blessing to New Beginnings Fellowship of Churches, um, and that is through PayPal, and, and the tag is um, at N-B-F-O-C, at symbol, I have that right, Sister Tiffany? Okay, on PayPal, it's the at symbol N. B F O C. Um, thank you. Amen. I'm done with my all of my announcements. <laughs> thank you for being so kind. Thank you for being so patient. We're getting ready to move, but if you don't mind, just one more praise. Will you give to the Lord for his grace and for and adore you just want to tell you Lord I love you more than anything I love you Jesus I worship and adore you just want Lord, I love you more than anything. The, the, the choir is getting ready to come, but I just want to say, I love you, Jesus. Will you lift your hands and your voice and declare, I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. your voices just want on I love you more than anything one more time the choir is coming I love you Jesus say I love Hallelujah. 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 How many of you, <laughs> we 
going to need you to clap your hands and stand on your feet. If you know that God has been good to you. How many of you have a reason to praise the Lord? So if you have a reason to praise the Lord, then stand on your feet and praise him.
nudge somebody and tell them, I will praise him. Because I've got a right and a reason to give God glory. Luke, the Lucan Gospel, chapter 24. Luke 24, verses 1 through 8. If you are able, will you stand for the reading of the Holy Writ? Um, and from Luke chapter 24, we'll move over to 1 Corinthians 15. Um, <clears throat> it's... It's a bit lengthy and out of my ordinary, um, but so that we can <clears throat> get the whole of where we're going. And if I don't make it because I get too happy, you can finish it on your own in the shower. Everybody know they be trying to preach in the shower. Everybody just don't want to admit it. I'm just saying, I get it. Trust me, I get it. That soap dish has been saved about 20 times. You preach into that soap dish. <laughs> Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 8. The word of the Lord. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day, somebody say, rise again. Then they remembered his words. 1 Corinthians 15. Um, obviously, Paul is, is answering concerns from the Corinthian church about the resurrection. So he's giving his apology on this line. I'll start at verse number three and go to verse eight, and then we'll go to verses 16 and 17. For I handed over or I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures that he appeared to Cephas then to the twelve then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one ultimately born, untimely born, he appeared also to me. Skip down, verse 16, 17, please. I appreciate your patience. For if the dead 
are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Be seated, please, in the presence of the Lord. While you're going down into your seat, if you don't mind, tell somebody, now I remember. Tell one more person on the other side, now I remember. What a wonderful way, family, for us to conclude this Lenten season. The Lenten season, these 40 days and other aspects, other parts of the church sharing 55 days in reflection, in consideration, in introspection of self. The, the Linden season carries with it powerful themes that if the church were to simply embrace it, we, just as we have been today, are rightly excited about where we are. That, of course, today, as we counterclock it, is not the actual day that Christ rose from the dead. The purpose of the celebration, the commemoration, is for us to remember or the Greek word is anamnesis, the same word that we use, that Paul used, do this in remembrance or anamnesis uh, of me as he shares the words of Christ. It's, it's more than just a mental remembering. Anamnesis carries with it the essence that by the Spirit, I am connected to the event anamnesis. And because of the recalling of what God has done in Christ, raising him from the dead, we are excited about the event. Here's the great thing about it. I don't, I didn't have to be at the event to be excited. The, the witness of the spirit is timeless and ageless, and it is the spirit that gives a unction for us to know that, uh, and my faith says, I don't have to be there to know that it transpired. Nudge somebody and tell them, I'm still excited. It's like celebrating a person's birthday, uh, but you were not in attendance to the celebration but the mere fact, just to know that we are celebrating your life, I don't have to be there to be excited for you. It's I share in the life through the excitement and the reality that you were born X amount of years ago and God breathed new life into you and that new life at that moment was an expression of the kind of new life that you will experience one day in the future. So, so what we're celebrating, family, right now, um, in terms of the Lenten season and now we've come to the end, is, of course, nestled within the Lenten season has been repentance. We've gone down into the sackcloth and ashes and we thought and considered and contemplated and turned from those things that we knew were costly habits of the flesh that did not please God. And after turning from those things, we turn to the God who saves our life. Nudge somebody and tell them he saved my life. And nudge him again and tell him he's still saving my life. And he's going to save my life. We were in that place of repentance and we talked about renewal or 
coming into newness. And we spoke about last week on reconciliation and restoring not only the relationship that we have to God, but also uh, repairing those breaches of relationships that we've had with one another, those, those, those breaches where it's time for us to be reconciled one to another. You've been gone too long. It's time for us to be reconciled one to another. And all of this is, is manifested and witnessed in Christ Jesus. So, so in the early years of the formation of the church, it was developing under the hands of creeds. It was and still is significantly important for the church to know and to declare what she believes. It is in this way. The Nicene Creed in a truncated form declares what the church believes. The triune God is asserted in Father, Holy Spirit, and Son together, consubstantial and one. It is the Son family who will be the focal point of these brief moments of preachment, uh, the Nicene Creed says, quote, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate uh, of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, somebody say the third day, he rose again in accordance with, with the scriptures, um, it serves, family, as the ground for our faith. Uh, so then, when a Christian utters the two themed uh, related clauses of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in Jesus Christ, who on the third day rose from the dead, and I believe in the resurrection of the body, of the body that one confesses the absolute uniqueness and the supernaturalness of the person of Jesus Christ, and the particular hope which he has brought to men, unquote. If he didn't rise, family, from the dead, Christ then sits among the rest of the religious icons who have claimed deity. But if Christ be risen, then he sits alone as the monogenic God-man, the Theo, uh, uh, the Theanthropos, God in human flesh, who cannot lie, and the lone deity who has conquered death, hell, and the grave, raised up above all principalities and powers. Uh, yes, um, uh, uh, made an open shame of all demonic powers and principalities, stripping them of all things, and given a name above every name. All this and more, but it didn't come without paying the ultimate price. But before we go there, family, shall we frame the text? Before Christ, there was never someone who both prophesied and fulfilled their life as he did. Sure, there is mythology and concepts of, of afterlife which lean into and support reincarnation, reincarnation that is coming back to life as something or someone else. But the biblical witness decries all this by housing the mystery of bodily resurrection in Jesus Christ. The Old Testament did not present, thoroughly, uh, present a thoroughly developed construction of resurrection. The Old Testament prophets alluded to what they saw seeing through the glass of prophecy dimly. For example, the young boy who was resuscitated by Elisha, the faith of Abraham that had Isaac been sacrificed, God would raise him up. David was spoken of as, quote, sleeping with the fathers, unquote. All of this alluded to the concept of a resurrection being possible. But there was nothing and no one who could satisfy the thought. David, in the midst of a praise, he prophesies in the Messianic Psalm of Psalm 16 and verse 10 that his soul won't be, won't be left in hell. Neither will the Holy One see corruption. 
Job, even in the crucible of his life, seeing death on the horizon, he asked a challenging theological question that carries eternal implications. If a mortal dies, will they live again? Oh, y'all, y'all acting like y'all don't know the Bible. Ezekiel 37, uh, the scattered dry bones could be used as a pointing prophecy towards a resurrection. Psalm 88 and 10 and Daniel 12 and 2 and more prophetically assert that there is something else after death. Nudge somebody and tell them there's something after this. I feel the old time preacher stretching out in me. So, so here it is, family. We should, I, I, uh, yes, and I think we've done an excellent job this morning. We should rightly rejoice about the resurrection. However, prophecy and the scriptures won't let us escape the process. Uh, resurrection is after something dies. Let me say it again. Resurrection is after something dies. The saints of old family were happy and joyful to be named with Christ. Not only to be raised up because of him, but to die in him. Equally, if they died in Christ, he who is the resurrection and the life will raise them up in new life. Clementina, she asserted that those who live well have no fear to die. St. John Chrysostom, he says <laughs> that believers do not fear death but sin. Understanding our vulnerability to death, the momento mori, to ready ourselves for death and live life in awareness of the limited time God has given us. The old folk would say it this way, I'm just a pilgrim traveling through. I can't get no help. This here is not my home. There is life beyond the grave. I wish uh, we're the church at about resurrection here. Um, I remember the old song. It said it this way. There is a leak in this old building. And my soul, I wish I had an old church, has got to move. This is one sacred appointment. Let me say it again because folk acting like they scared of death. But when you got the grace of God, there is no fear of death. Death is a vehicle and a conduit for me to get from this to that. And to God be the glory yeah, I feel you pushing me in the deep waters. Yes, yeah, there's a leak in this old building, and my soul has got to move. I'm just traveling through here, and on my way to glory, I'm just going to tell a few folks about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul declared, and this is the reason why the Power of the universe housed in human flesh. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. There's no reason or no need for me to be ashamed of a God who condescended enough that he went into the grave, but he was God enough to step out the grave. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. By faith then, family. By faith, family, then we agree. By faith, family, we then agree with Christ's pattern in his death uh, as believers. Death, family, was not the end, but a necessary means towards an end. As Christ yielded his life, listen here, as Christ yielded his life into the hands of the Father by declaring into thine hands. I wish we had a church here 
Just as he committed his life into the hands of the Father, so do we. As Christ's body was given over to the hands of men and women to lay him in the tomb, so will we. But, everybody say but. But. Death under grace has lost its sting and the grave its power or ability to hold captive those who have credo. Credo means I believe. Uh, I wish you would lift your hands and declare it. I believe. Yes, I don't just want to believe for a nice car and a beautiful house. I believe that when this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, I got a building not made by the hands of men. So ashes to ashes and dust to dust. But I believe when the great trumpet shall sound, I'm getting up out the grave, y'all. I feel like running for you because y'all acting like y'all don't know his hope beyond the grave. I'm following in the train of triumph of my Christ. And if I believe he got up out the grave, then baby best believe you coming up out the grave. I know you might be going through a down moment right now, but you're not going to stay down when you got Christ on the inside. Let me finish here. I think y'all must be tired of something. I don't know. I'm the one working. Y'all help me through. Push me. Oh, I feel him in my spirit. And he, if any pop wouldn't sit back there and pull it, he'll just be back there going, "Mm -hmm, mm mmm, mmm. The Westminster Confession recapitulates classic Christianity. About while teaching on death, succinctly declares, and I quote, the bodies of men after death return to dust and see corruption, but their souls, which neither die nor sleep, having an immortal subsistence, immediately return to God who gave them. The souls of the righteous, being then made perfect in holiness, are received into the highest heavens where they behold the face of God in light and glory, waiting for the full redemption of their bodies, unquote. So then Job 19, 25 and 26, Hosea 6 and 2, all those scriptures depend on John 2, 19, Matthew 27, 63, and Luke 24, 46, that Christ is the first fruit of those who have and will enter the portal of death and be resurrected. Translation, here it is. Scriptures are not about a personal come up. Let me say it again. Uh, Scriptures are not about a personal come up. That this modern trashy theology has ascribed to while promoting heretical thought and posturing. But scriptures are about being brought up or resurrected because of Jesus Christ. And he not alone, but the first fruits of those that will be resurrected. Might I add this part, you, me, and everyone else who names the name of Christ as Lord have nothing to shout about if he didn't get up. Let me say it again. You, me, and everyone else who names the name of Christ as Lord have nothing to shout about if he didn't get up. If you don't mind, nudge that person one more time and tell them, I got a reason. And I've got something to shout about. 
Tell somebody else that ain't going to be stuck up, but they're going to look you in your mouth. I don't care if you need a breath mint and your breath stinking. Tell them, hey, look at me and prophesy to me. And tell them I've got a reason and something to shout about. I've got to be done. I've got to be done. I've exhausted my time. So the messengers, the angelos, the two men here in the biblical text, they speak to those who have come to where Jesus is not. Customary, it is their custom historically to go to the grave to anoint the body with spices after a few days. But Jesus is not there anymore. God, I wish I had some help. <laughs> They've gone to the place where he no longer is laid. We know where we laid him, but why is he not here? Because there's something different about Jesus. I've got to be done. I'm about to be done lecturing. But there's something different about Jesus. That's why when we call his name, something happens. God, help me. It don't happen when you declare uh, Buddha or when you declare Elijah Muhammad or any other sweet old God. But when you declare the name of Jesus. I feel like, yes, when there's something happened, the song says that it's like the fragrance after the rain. It, it not just sounds good, but it smells good too. It not just sounds good and smell good, but David prophesied and declared, oh, taste and see. Yes, now we hear that the Lord is good. He is the curios. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. You forgot what he told you. And the reason why you're looking perplexed and confused as to why he's not in the tomb is because you forgot what he told you. Hey, nudge somebody and tell them, don't you ever forget but just in case you forget, I got a word to jog your memory that when you're looking like you're getting ready to faint, they that wait upon the Lord. Yeah. I got to be done this resurrection morning. So why do you stand here then? The angels, the messengers declare, why do you stand here? Looking perplexed. The Greek word uh, perplexed means you look clouded or you look baffled. You look puzzled and confused about what you're beholding. Perplexed, it, it's puzzled. It's, it means having no shape or form that expresses what you believe. Why are you looking so perplexed in the middle of your trial? Why are you looking so puzzled that uh, you're falling all apart? And I thought you said you believe, but believers don't look so confused about what they believe. When, when you believe something, you don't have to test it to see if it's going to work. When you believe and know the God that you say that you believe in I don't have to get a fleece and run a gamut of tests about God being faithful I heard the prophet when he declared that great is thy faithfulness and there is no shadow of turning in you I'm not confused about what I believe if I recall what God said the angels, if you believed what he told you, had you believed what he told you then, you wouldn't be standing here looking crazy as if he lied when he told you. Paul pulls the puzzle together and he asserts, if he didn't rise from the dead, no one will. And he, and he then wasn't the Christ. 
if he wasn't raised up, everything told to us was a lie. Everything our eyes have seen. This is Paul pulling it together. He says, everything that our eyes have seen and everything that our ears have heard were actually lies. And if they are lies, then we can believe like Muslims that it really wasn't Jesus on the cross, but it was a lookalike. Or some believe that it was actually Judas Iscariot that was up on the cross made up to look like Christ. We can believe that it was some ghost. Uh, but if we believe this, then we are still in sin. But I hear the old saints, of, I'm going to my seat, y'all. We're going to go to the table, and then we're going to go to where we're going to go. But if Christos Anisti, if Christ is risen, and you don't believe it, like the Corinthians, according to Augustine, you are, quote, carnal-minded and sensual, not discerning the Spirit of God. You are quarrelsome and envious, walking according to man, unquote. But if Christos Anesti, that is, if Christ be risen, then he is not the only one that is risen. But they who are in Christ are also anestimai. That is, we are raised up. So when, I'm going to my seat, I'm done lecturing. Uh, but when Christ came up out the grave, after being hung on the cross, I'm sorry, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm Baptist to my heart, so I got to go there. Uh, when he was on the cross, and on the cross, he's declaring, Father, forgive them. Because they really don't know what they're doing. But in order to get to the resurrection, I've got to be on an old rugged cross. And while he was on the cross, from the sixth to the ninth hour, when it gets to the time where another sun can't shine, because the S-O-N is shining on the cross, the old Baptist this preacher would say that the moon dripped away in blood, but then also the sun s u n hid itself behind the clouds because if I and if I be lifted up. I'll draw all men unto me. So lift the Savior up for the world to see. I wish you would shake somebody by the hand and tell them, say, neighbor, it was Jesus on the cross. And when they drove the nine inch spike through his wrist, when they drove the spike through his feet, out comes blood. But watch that blood. Because without the shedding of the blood, there can be no remission of sins. But then they take a spear and pierce him through the fifth and the sixth rib. It Pierce the pericardial sac of the Lord's heart. Out came blood and out came water. And while underneath the flood, the Roman centurion says, Surely this is the Son of God. But then he declares, Father, into thine hands I commend my spirit. He laid his head in the locks of his shoulder. The Baptist preacher would declare, He died. Yes, he died. They take him down from off of the cross, lay Jesus his body in a tomb. He laid there the rest of the day Friday. He laid there in silence on Saturday. But early, 
I wish I had some saints. The text says, in the early dawns, that means that the sun wasn't fully exposed. So it was still dark. But Jesus got up out the grave because weeping may endure for a night. But joy, yes, Lord. Grab your neighbor by the hands and tell him, neighbor, it was dark on Saturday, but early on Sunday morning, Jesus, the rock of ages, cleft for me, the mighty rock rolling down through Babylon, the rock of ages laid in a tomb he laid in a rock but on Sunday morning my rock stood up in a rock my rock rolled away the rock my rock stood on the rock he declares all power all power yes sir all power After the angels jogged their memory, they said, now I remember. that the grave was not the end. It was the conduit to the resurrection. And the reason why we can rejoice, wait, this was a, so this is what the song says. And life is worth the living just I wish you just, I, I promise you, just bother your neighbor one more time. I, I promise you, I'm, I'm not going to make you do it no more. But nudge him and tell him, that's the reason why I got joy. That's the reason why I'm excited. Life is worth living just. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. Because he didn't stay in the grave. I'm not going to stay in the grave. I'm coming up out of there. Pull on your neighbor and tell him I'm coming up out of there. I don't know what you got to come up out of, but I'm coming up out of there. I'm coming up out of there. You get up out of there. Get up out of that sad place. Get up out of that disappointed place. Resurrected power. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get up out of there. We're going to the table, and if Christ be not risen, if Christ be not risen, then my faith is in vain. But there's no vanity in my faith. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And because he lives, somebody say, all fear is gone. Because I know, oh, who holds the future? Who holds my future? And life is worth living just because he lives. Will you clap your hands all over the house and give Jesus praise? Amen. 
You may be here this glorious day and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you confess with your mouth and believe it in your heart, here it is again. This is the charisma of the gospel, the substance of the gospel. You confess with your mouth and believe it in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. <laughs> if you believe it, just lift your hands and say, I believe. You may be watching my way of Facebook or YouTube, or you may be here in the building and you say, I want to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. How do I do that, preacher? You just confess with your mouth. This is the beginning of the journey. This is not all to it. It's the beginning of your journey with the Lord. You confess with your mouth. You believe it in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. You may be watching. Just repeat this very brief prayer with me. With hands uplifted, Father, in Jesus' name, I confess that I am a sinner in need of salvation. I do believe, I believe that Christ died on a cross, was buried in a grave, but on the third day he rose from the dead. And right now, he's at the right hand of the Father praying for me. I receive his love. I receive his sacrifice into my life. This day, in Jesus' name, Will you clap your hands and give God praise? And praise? As we come, family, to <clears throat> the center of all things, what a great day to be able to share Holy Eucharist or Holy Communion at the Lord's table. To eat of the Lord's body and drink of his blood. But before we enter into this sacred sacrament, as we enter into the next few moments, I want to read from one of the teachings of the church called the Didache, leading us into Holy Eucharist. It says, but on the Lord's day, do you assemble and break bread and give thanks after confessing your transgressions in order that your sacrifice may be pure for everyone that has controversy with his friends, let him not come together with you until they be reconciled, that your sacrifice may not be profane. For this is that which was spoken by the Lord. At every place and time, bring me a pure sacrifice. For a great king am I, says the Lord, and my name is marvelous among the nations. Will you just... Pray silently for a few seconds of those things that you have done and left undone that did not glorify and please the Lord before we enter and pray our prayer of confession. Family, will you join me in our prayer of confession that's on the screen? You can begin now. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in word, in deed, and in thought by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbor as we love ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. And forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer out of the sincerity of your heart, the Lord Jesus Christ himself will give you of all of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The people of God say amen. amen. Will you find two or three people and tell them the peace of the Lord be with you? can follow along with me in the liturgy on the screen above. Family, the Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. At this table. At this table. At this table. All are welcome at this table set by love, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and received by the children of God as the gifts of God for the people of God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. for yourself and when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal son to share our human nature to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you the God and father of all he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink, it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, family, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Again, family, Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. One more great time. Lift your voice. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ will come again. Join me, please, and extend your hands toward the table. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Bless, Master, the holy bread, and make this bread the precious body of your Christ. Bless, Master, the holy cup, and that which is in this cup, the precious blood of our Christ. Bless, Master, both the holy gifts, changing them by your Holy Spirit. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for the people of God, to be for the people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of a new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us all, bring us with all of your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. The people of God say amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Our God.
to receive by faith with thanksgiving. You can begin to come from the back.
Christ our Passover. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, broken for me. To Jesus. Still hear the plastic peeling. Family, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, shed for me to Jesus. Hallelujah. And I know it was the blood. I know it was. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. One more time. uplifted as I give the final benediction and blessing. I pray that the rest of your day be blessed and favored and we pray for one another and be encouraged the rest of this resurrection Sunday. And let me, let me just give this note. I don't care what Congress passes or Senate passes or any bill that's passed. The church has her own calendar. We do not abide by the calendar of the world. Am I clear? May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people. Anger so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears, tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, starvation, and war. Tears so that you will reach out to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with foolishness. Foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world. Foolishness so that you will do what others claim cannot be done. And as you go, I pray that your basket and your storehouse will be to the overflowing, that every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon, that you will be victorious. I said that you will be victorious. As a matter of fact, that you will stand in the place that I am a more than conqueror. Through him that loved me. I pray. I pray that scholarships be freed up for you for schooling. That people will find you and be a blessing in your life. I pray that your body will be healed in Jesus' name. That when you go to the doctors, that that lump will be dissolved in Jesus' name. You will not 
have Alzheimer's or dementia like your family? Yama, Soko Rabayas. That the generational trauma in your family stops right now. I feel like prophesying in the Holy Ghost. That the winds of change will blow in your life today. That the enemy that you saw today, you will see no more. That both the horse and the rider will be drowned in the Red Sea. I break the spirit of poverty from off your life. I break the spirit of poverty from off your mind. That special ingenuity that you will have thoughts that will be by the Holy Ghost that will give you plans to prosper and to excel. That God will pour forth wisdom, knowledge, and understanding into your life that you cannot acquire in the classroom, but God give you wisdom today. In Jesus' name. That high blood pressure be regulated. Low blood pressure be regulated. Diabetes turn. That your body function in the perfection in which God created it to function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that you will see ultimate victory in your life starting today. Jesus Christ himself bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the 